Good morning, everyone. It's Rita Freecott here from Picked and Polished in Alexandria, New Hampshire, um, where we love to teach you how to do DIY home decor, um, paint finishes. I'm a Dixie Belle retailer, and I love to share and educate people on um, how to use their products so they can get amazing results when they're doing their um, DIY projects or if you're selling um, furniture and different finishes on things. So um, I might be a couple minutes early. I was supposed to come on at 10. Hi, Brenda. How are you? Good morning. Um, so today we're going to be talking about more about blended finishes. I'm going to do the side of this dresser, um, but I wanted to show you where I got with it the other day. So I started with um, blending this piece. Sorry about the light. See, I like the light behind me because it makes me feel like angelic, like, ah, I've got this little aura. And earlier today, I dropped, um, oh, hi, Sheila, thanks for watching. I dropped a gigantic dresser on my pinky toe. It's part of the job, people. I thought I was going to have a heart attack, but I, I managed okay. So, yeah, see this beast right here? I'm going to be painting that for my daughter. It's going to be a rainbow bohemian finish is what she requested. She's six years old. And she's a whole lot of girl in a little body. So it is not surprising to me that she wants a rainbow bohemian blended dresser for her bedroom. So that's up next. Dropped it on my toe this morning. Um, but I'm feeling better. I can hobble around. And now I've got um, this beautiful dresser behind me. I'm hoping to help you with some blending tips. Um, and everybody has their own style. So by no means am I saying that mine is the only, my style is the only way to do it. Hi, Lynn. Um, hi, Anne-Marie. You could do it like a million different ways, but i just going to share how I approach um, a blended finish. And so this is a dress I was working on the other day. I'm going to come away from it a little bit so you can see it better. Um, let me get a different viewpoint. And pretty soon I'll have my camera on a, um, can you guys see that okay? I'll have my camera on a, um, there we go. I'll have my camera on a little, what do you call it, doohickey, so it won't be so making you dizzy. Um, but you can see it, it's a gradual um, change from the dark navy um, to a mixture of the stormy seas and the navy, and it gets progressively lighter here. And then the stormy seas is my lightest color here. So I'm working with two base colors. Um, and so I will, I'm going to move over to the other side, and I'm going to do the other side with you while I have you um, live. So I'm going to put my camera, um, I'm going to put my camera in its little tripod thingy so that my camera's not shaking and moving around so you can see um, how I get the finish again. So with this piece, I'm just going to recap real quick. It was really dark, um, stained old finish. So I started by cleaning really well with white lightning inside and out. Um, I did a rinse with water. And then I didn't do any sanding. Um, I did boss, which is the stain blocker, and it also blocks odors. So I put um, a one thin coat of the boss on there. And then, and that's also something you can get on my website. I used the clear boss, but you can use the white boss too. Um, and then I did a base coat in Stormy Seas. I always do a base coat when I um, blend colors so that when I'm moving the paint around, that the, the wood isn't showing through if I don't want it to be. So sometimes you might want to blend colors and you might want like a dry brush look and you might not care that the wood shows through. You might actually want the wood to sh show through. But in this custom order, um, I'm sort of replicating a finish I did before and in that situation, none of the wood showed through. So I did my base coat and then I started at the bottom with my In the Navy, my darkest color. I blended the two colors together in the middle. I sort of planned out where I wanted one color to start and one color to end. And then I went with the Stormy Seas up top. So I'm going to move my camera around to the side. Try not to make you guys too dizzy. Let's see. If you want to share where you're tuning in from while I do this, that would be great. Um, and I'm trying to see if... Okay, so this is the side of my dresser. Um, it's probably going to be mostly my hands today because I kind of want to show you. This is just my shadow here. So I want to show you how um, I blend this piece. So I also want to announce the winner of the free Dixie Belle 8-ounce paint 
from yesterday, and that was Lori Sharp. Yay, Lori, you won your color of choice in an 8-ounce paint, and I can have that either shipped to you or you can pick up. It's up to you. So we've got... Um, We've got someone from Sarasota, Florida. She's a newbie. Saw you before paint and blended blue navy with a lighter color was great. Thank you. I'm so glad you you liked that. I hope it was helpful. Um, and if you guys ever have questions, um, I'm a Dixie Bell retailer here in New Hampshire, but I can help you via Facebook Messenger and ship anywhere in the USA. Um, and most of the time, shipping is only like ten dollars. So I'd be ha happy to help you via Messenger or. We can even do FaceTime um, if you need some help and want to book some consult time with me. We can do that, too. So, um, hi, Lori. Thanks for joining. Um, and so, today, I'm just working with my base coat again, which is the Stormy Seas. Um, hi, Kellyanne. How are you? Um, I've been meaning to call you. We need to hook up and go to the beach. Um, I was just telling everybody I dropped a big dresser on my toe, my pinky toe, this morning. And I was moving it around, but it's part of the job, people. If you're, not, if you're going to be refinishing furniture, you better be ready to drop some heavy things on your tootsies. So, um, I always prep. I have, um, even though I worked on this yesterday, I still go back and I kind of wipe off the surface because I know overnight sometimes dust collects on pieces. Um, and so I'm just going to quickly w wipe them off. Hi, Susan. Um, and so the other thing I wanted to tell you that sometimes get people, get, this gets people in a panic in my workshop sometimes. Um, see how this really dark color here? If I wipe it with my finger or um, something kind of rubs against it, the paint doesn't scratch off. But because it's a super chalky finish, um, it's a chalk mineral based paint, the Dixie Belle, whenever you're using a dark saturated color, if you wipe like a dark red or a black or a dark blue, if you wipe your hand across it um, or something rubs against it, the paint likely won't scratch off once it's cured, but it might leave like a chalky mark or a fingerprint or whatever. Um, and so I always clear coat or wax my, um, my dark colors for that reason. However, I want you to know that if you distress a dark color, and if I were to distress this dark blue, it would turn like a chalky, like lighter blue in those areas. Or if I were to distress a dark red, it might look like a pinkish when I distress it. But then, that's when people get in a panic. And I always say, don't get a panic. My dad, my old school Greek dad used to always say that in his little accent. Don't get a panic. So you don't get a panic. You just, when you clear coat it, it evens out the finish right back to where it was. So even if you get... Um, you know, you start distressing, you're like, oh my gosh, I've ruined my finish. No, no, you haven't. You're just going to clear coat it, and it'll even out that color right back to where it was. Or if you have fingerprints or little um, lighter areas where someone's rubbed against a darker finish, you can um, you can just clear coat or wax, and it'll, it'll bring it right back to the original color. So don't panic about that. That came up today because I had done that on the front of the dresser, and I thought that might be something helpful to share. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I've already kind of wiped this off um, just to make sure it hasn't collected too much dust overnight because sometimes that happens. Um, and I'm going to get started. And I want to show you that I saved my um, I saved my paint palettes from yesterday on the paper. This is my darker medium, like mixed shade. Um, this is my kind of in-between transition. Um, and this is my, like almost stormy sea shade. So I kind of kept those so I could color match a little bit today when I'm doing, um, trying to match like this is where my navy ended, this is where the new color starts, this is where it gets a little bit lighter, and this is where the this is where the um, stormy sea starts. So I save my dried paint palette plates for that reason. And um, paint colors typically dry darker they look darker once they're dry. So when I mix my colors, they're not going to necessarily match exactly, but I can have a gauge of, okay, that's pretty close. I can use these as like um like a kind of a, a guide to help me blend to match the front of the dresser on the side because I didn't do it all on the same day. So let me know where you're tuning in from. I'm also here to help you with questions. Um, and if you have your own chalk paint projects you're working on, 
doesn't have to be Dixie Belle. I can help with any questions that you might have. And if I don't know, um, I can try to find out the answer for you um, with someone else that might that I might know that might have the answer. So feel free to ask questions as we go today. Uh, again, my name is Rita Freecott, and I'm in Alexandria, New Hampshire, but I help people all over the U.S. with um, chalk painting, um, finishing ideas, and projects, and I supply Dixie Bell paint and finishing products. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I always start with a damp brush. This is my Klingon brush, but Dixie Bell has just started making synthetic brushes like this that I can't wait to try. I have some on order now. Um, and I've heard amazing things about them, and they're very affordable for a high-end brush. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start the base. So I know my drawer on this side ends about here within the navy, so actually right here. So I'm not going to go, I'm going to stop about there with my navy, okay? And I'm going to keep my surface wet, and that's how I'm going to be able to keep things moving. I start with my darkest color. I'm going to move this actually. Alright, I start with my darkest color and I'm just going to dampen the surface a little bit. Um, and if I get it too damp, it'll be drippy so I can always touch it up with a paper towel or kind of get some of that water off. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I don't want the I don't want it to be drippy wet. So I'm going to go ahead and get some more paint on my brush. Let me know if you guys can see this okay. What are you guys up to today for your weekend plans? I hope you've got something fun planned. I use my hand sometimes, so. Get to tip the legs here. So this is kind of a start to finish, almost a start to finish um, project on my lives that I'm doing with you on this dresser. I hope to show you, um, I also took a video yesterday that I did with, um, with um, the front of it and I'll put it in a, like a fast motion video for you to watch too because that um, that will show you how I got the front to look the way it does now because I didn't go live to finish that part so I'm going to try to get my lines kind of straight here and let's see what are the cons with the boar bristle brushes besides they stink real bad I I, they're not boar bristle, they're synthetic, um, so they don't smell at all. Um, they're synthetic to, I think, to mimic that br kind of a brush. So mine don't smell, the Dixie Belle shouldn't either because there's a synthetic brush. That's a good question. Um, and I just love them. They spring right back. This part doesn't get rusty in the water, which is really nice. Um, um, the the bristles hold more paint, uh, so your paint will go a lot farther with a better brush than with um, with a chip brush. Although I do still love my Dixie Bell six dollar premium chip brushes for different things too, and I'll use them today to help me blend. I usually use like a one without any paint on it to help me blend. So I'm just going to wet the surface, keep it wet because I don't want it to dry up too quick. Um, and I've got in the navy on my brush. And I think yesterday, I want to say this was like my darker, medium, dark. So most of that color is in the navy. So I'm going to go ahead and put some in the navy on my plate. But I want to make sure I have enough on there to kind of go across to the side. Whoops, I've got some drippies going on. So I'm going to fix that real quick. Get that taken care of. And that's okay because you're going to keep working the paint so it doesn't have to be perfect so this is about where I start my next color and this is a half like almost empty jar so I don't care that I'm going to contaminate this um, yet I'll go to synthetic next oh this I've never smelled the smell Sheila is it really bad um, so I'm just going to barely tint the in the navy so it's slightly lighter um, and I'm, I'm okay with this jar getting contaminated with the in the navy because or mixed or whatever you want to call it contaminated sounds so serious like I'm working with something dangerous um, so can you move the camera back just a little so we can see the whole piece absolutely 
Thank you for asking. Sorry about that. I know that's annoying. How's that? Is that better? Can you see that better, Lori? Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and start blending my next shade. I'm just going to give it a little more water, make sure my brush is wet, and just kind of... And again, this isn't an exact science, you guys. You can play around with it. Um, but my goal, really, for this piece is to have, like, you know, this is where my next color stops. So I want to gradually work into my top color, which is the base color I have. So it's not an exact science. Everybody does it a little differently. Um, some people work their paint up and meet in the middle with the two different colors, and I've done that before, and that's, that works too. Um, I think having an open mind when you're trying a new technique and giving yourself some grace and um, not being too hard on yourself and just being open-minded that you just might have to keep going over it and trying new things as part of you know, learning and doing something new, so. Um, okay, so now we're gradual, and I want to try to get rid of that, like, line right there, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of go over that, but now I'm kind of a little bit too low with a lighter color, so I'm going to go back in, and this is where I'm going to use a different brush, okay, and I'm going to put some more navy on my brush because, um, Oh, Sheila says the boar brushes smell like dirty feet. Okay, that's that's not pleasant. Um, <laughs> but it's funny. Um, yeah, I've never used those before, so I don't know. Um, so this is where my in the navy stops. So I don't want I don't want um, it to go too low with the medium color. Okay. So there I've got. It's kind of gradually getting lighter. I'm going to add some more Stormy Seas each time because that's my base color and eventually I want to work up to that, okay? So I'm going to use my chip brush and just kind of mix until I feel like, see like that's I think a little too light, so I'm going to go a little bit darker. And again, worst case scenario, I don't like the way it looks, I paint over it or I get it a little more wet and I blend a little more. So really nothing to be afraid of. It's just kind of giving yourself time to practice and try different techniques and find the one that works best for you. You see how it's gradually getting lighter? It's not like a stark, I don't want a stark line here. I'm going to kind of work it, work it together. And then right about here, I want it to get even lighter so that it really blends with the, um, with the stormy seas. Let me make sure I'm getting my sides here. Whoops. Got a little spot here that I missed, so no big deal. I'm just gonna go in with my other brush. So one thing to be careful of is just that you're you're not careful of, but just that you're mindful of what brushes have what I got a little hair on there. I'm just gonna scratch it off. Um, what brushes have what colors on them. Okay, does that look pretty straight to you guys? Any questions or um, things you're wondering about, products you're wondering about or wanting to try that you've been trying to get information on, I'm happy to help you. Um, okay, so now I want to work it closer to the Stormy Seas because that's my base. I do another workshop with blending. This is something I need to get nervous about and want to do it. You know what, Kellyanne, I've had a lot of people interested in this, and we squeezed it in in the um, boot camp. So the paint finishing boot camp I offer is a good one. See, that's too light, you guys. It's way too um, stark So I have for what I'm looking for. So I'm going to wet my brush again and add some more in the navy and lighten and darken that a bit because it's too, and that's too dark. See, I went from like too light to do too dark. So I'm not going to get in a panic. I'm actually going to get a new brush. I'm not going to worry too much. I'm going to kind of blend that out. See how that's not a big deal. And it actually worked out okay because I had too dark over too light. And so now look at it. It was a happy accident. Look at that. So now it blends. Sorry, Kellyanne. I got distracted. You know, that happens easily with me. So there we go. That blends beautifully into the other color. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Um... And I'm careful not to go down and touch up down here because what's going to happen is 
I would end up um, making a big light mark with this brush down here. So, you, you know, your brain sometimes wants to go and touch up real quick, but you have to think about what color's on your brush. Um, and if you do and you, you know, something doesn't come out the way you want it, it's okay. You just paint over it. I'm going to kind of blend these sides, too, a little bit. Be careful not to go too low. And then the top is going to be the um, Stormy Seas. So I'm going to work my way with that. Another brush. So this is why I say get lots of brushes ready to go. I have the $6 chip brushes on my website. I have the link above for my products. Love your videos as you explain everything so well as you paint. Thank you, Lori. That means a lot to me. I used to be a teacher, and so this is like a passion of mine to share and kind of learn from each other. I've still got a lot to learn, but I love to teach. So, um, difference when paint with grain versus against the grain. That's a good question. Um, so it depends on the finish you're going for. So I don't want to get a lot of drippies on the paint that I've already done. And if I was using a squirt bottle and pumping it, I would get drip marks, especially on the dark colors. So I want to be, I don't want to mess with my, oh shoot, see I got talking, look what happened. I, got, I, I can't do two things at once, you guys. I got talking, I did the wrong color, but what, what am I going to do now? It's no big deal, I'm going to paint over it with a little bit of the Stormy Seas, and you won't even know that was there. I'm actually going to take my cloth, and it's good, I feel like it's good when I kind of mess stuff up, because then you guys can see how we fix it, and we kind of move on. And like this one was a happy accident, so that one I didn't even mean to do, and it worked out in my favor. So this I want to be just the Stormy Seas, so I have to be... I'll get back to your question in just a minute. I haven't forgotten. She had a good question about um, painting against the grain or with the grain. And actually, depends on the finish you want. I think for blending, it doesn't matter so much if you're going for a smooth finish anyway. Um, but look how good the paint adheres, you guys. I'm like wiping it hard with water. And I just painted this yesterday, this side. And it's not wiping off. Um, alright, so now I'm going to go over that with Stormy Seas, with another brush. Um, so if you're looking to do like a, um, like a rustic finish and you want a lot of texture, I like to cross hatch, and cross hatch is just going across and up and down, across and up and down. I like to go across because it picks up the grain. But when you're painting, I really don't feel like going with the grain because this paint will... So this paint will kind of um, fall into the grain, especially as you wet it. Do you notice that it like gets rid of the graininess of the wood? And that's especially good when you're doing like cab your kitchen cabinets and you have like oak, really oaky, grainy stock cabinets. It's really nice that you can just dampen your brush or the surface and, um, and you start, it like blends into the grain. So with this type of finish, I don't really worry about grain direction. Um, but with other finishes, if you want a textured look, you can go against the grain. It will give you a little bit more rustic of a feel. All right, so now I just have Stormy Seas on my brush. And this will look different as it dries, you guys will notice. And then I'm definitely wanting a clean Stormy Seas color up here. Right, and I always paint like the under parts, and I just want it to be really finished. This is a custom order for um, a little boy's bedroom, a nursery. He's gonna be using it for mom's gonna be using it for um, for his changer. So that's exciting, and I'll be doing like um, a wave pattern on the sides of the drawers. But like underneath here, it's pretty grainy, and I've got my brush wet, and I've got some paint. And if you wet your brush, the paint will fall right into the grains and smooth and even out the surface for you. You guys see that? Everything I'm doing okay? Just going to get that going. Okay, so that's painted. This is painted. I'm going to give this side a little something, something. Here we go. Um, my jiggly arm's in the way, but that's okay. You think all this painting I did, I would have toned arms, but no, I don't. 
Um, Kelly Ann, you're too funny. I love you. Don't get a, I don't get a panic. You know that about me, baby. I don't. Um, thanks, Betty. So, Kelly Ann, about the blending workshops, I think um, we, we I added it to my boot camp, but it really is a technique that you could almost do in like you could spend three hours practicing it. I mean, it's a full workshop in itself. And I was almost thinking about if anyone would be interested in like doing a um, ordering some product and then doing like a, a live video um, workshop with me so that no matter where you live, you could learn how to do it with me and it would be private. It would be live, but it would be private and it would also be recorded so you could go back and look. And then I would do like a Zoom call with you or a FaceTime call and follow up with you to see how your project's going. So let me know, message me, or just comment here if any of you would be interested in something like that because I could set that up too. Um, so here we go. We've got a beautiful blended finish here. Um, I notice I've got like a couple little dots right there from water and I'll go back and kind of touch that up. Um, the thing about blending though is when you touch things up you have to try to color match otherwise you kind of end up doing the whole side all over again. Um, and so next up is this dresser. I'll be finishing the other side today. Um, and then I'll be doing um, I'll be doing brown wax details and kind of doing some shadowing with the brown wax to highlight. It's a, got a really beautiful curvy front, and I love the inlay detail here. How this is kind of um, gives it some dimension. So I'll be doing some waxing brown wax with that, and the best dang wax is on my website too. And then I'll be going over the whole piece in a satin clear coat to give it some um, really good protection. And also, even though you don't have to clear coat this paint, I always find that with the darker, chalkier colors, it's always good to do that because then you have, you know, you don't get the fingerprints and stuff, that, and it evens out the color, and it evens out your finish, and um, helps you blend your waxes, too. That's another great thing. So at, um, t at 1 o'clock today, I'll be going live on Chalk Mineral Paint Enthusiast Group um, to do a quick um, Back to Basics. Um, video on Dixie Bell's um, Easy Peasy Wax, and on that page, every single day in the month of August, um, starting like the middle of August, I think the 14th was the kickoff day, or the 13th, they do a live video, they feature one product during that live video, and you can learn the basics of everything on those tutorials, it's great, um, and they're quick and simple and to the point, um, and so they've highlighted all their product. Today we're going towards um, the Easy Peasy Wax. So I'll show you some ways you can use that. It'll be quick and simple again. Um, but if you're wondering about their Dixie Bell Boss or their Gator Hide or any of those products, you can message me or you can, re you can refer to those Back to Basic Live videos from um, the Chuck Mineral Paint Enthusiast Facebook page. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Chuck Mineral Paint Enthusiast Facebook page. So um, you'll have to check that out. I'll be there at 1 o'clock today, um, and I will be posting the link to it. So if you're wondering what page it is, I'll post the link so you can just click and like and follow the page, and then I'll pop up at 1 o'clock. Um, and so it's the Easy Peasy Spray Wax I'll be doing today. And then I, I think tomorrow they're doing Gilding Wax, so that will be fun too. Um, but anyway, let me know if you have any questions. I hope this is this tutorial was helpful to you. Um, and I'm so glad you joined me today. I really appreciate it. And don't forget Lori Sharp. And when you tune in next time, you won your eight ounces of free Dixie Bell paint. Yay! So um, you guys have a great day. And I'll see you at 1 o'clock on the Chalk Mineral Paint Enthusiast page. Bye!